Hello, Algebra students. Today we're going to be talking about um, areas and perimeters of some different shapes. We're mostly talking about rectangles, but let's take a look at what we have here. I have four different quadrilaterals here. And I want to know which one doesn't belong, which one doesn't really match with the other ones. And I will say I could come up with a way for each of these, how each one of them doesn't fit. So take a look at this for a second. See what you think makes sense for which one doesn't fit with the other ones. And then I'll tell you what I have. Looking at the shape in A, this is called a trapezoid. In shape A, I don't have any side lengths that match any other side lengths. In all of these other ones, I have at least a pair that'll match in each of them. And that's not the case in A. So that might be a reason for not choosing that one. For B, looking at the measurements that I have here in, in um, oh, I'm sorry, I've got to pick a better pen here. In this rectangle, I've got an 8 and I've got a 10. And I want you to notice that in all of these other ones, there's a dimension that's 9 in every single one of them. And B does not have a 9 for a length. Looking at C, the difference that I've got here is that this is the only one that it's actually a square, right? All four side lengths are going to match. And all four angles are right angles. And it's the only one that has those characteristics. D, the thing that's different here is it's the only one that doesn't have a right angle, right? So we could have an entire class look at these four shapes and we could have people picking any one of the four shapes for the attribute that they noticed was different compared to the rest of the shapes. So now looking more specifically at some rectangles, uh, I've got three rectangles drawn here, and I want to know which rectangle has the greatest perimeter. Remember, perimeter is the distance around the outside. We don't have any length or any, I'm sorry, any units here. So I don't know if it's measuring in centimeters or feet or miles or inches or whatever. It doesn't really matter. But the perimeter is just adding up all four sides. And I have a trick that some of you may not be aware of. I know that in a rectangle, if this side is eight, well, I know that this side is also going to be 8. And if the top here is 2, then the bottom here is going to be 2. So you could add up all four sides. Or here is the faster way of doing this. Instead of adding 8 plus 8 is 16 and 2 plus 2 is 4, then I would add all those up and 16 plus 4 is 20. Here's what I would do. I would look at this and say, well, 8 plus 2 is 10. And then these other two sides would give me another 10. So that perimeter, I could just add up those two sides that I know and double it. So 8 plus 2 is 10. That's going to be 20 units, whatever I have here. In B, using that same trick, 6 plus 4 is 10. And then I get another 10 over here. So that's also 20 units. Well, that's weird. Take a look at letter C. 9 and 1, well, that's 10. Doubled would also give me 20. All three of these rectangles have exactly the same perimeter. So there's none of them that have the greatest perimeter. They're all exactly the same. Now I want to know which of the rectangles has the greatest area. So area we know is length times width or base times height. So now 8 times 2, I really truly don't need to write in all four of the side lengths because I can just do 8 times 2. This has an area of 16 square units. Here, 4 times 6 would be 24 square units. So clearly, clearly the areas are not going to match. And 9 times 1 is going to be 9 square units. So the one with the greatest area is going to be Letter B. Um, it's, it, it's not a surprise that that one has the greatest area because we're going to find some patterns here to decide probably which, which rectangle, if I would give you a whole bunch of them, you could figure out which one, was, which one would have the big, biggest area just based on something um, that we're going to find as a pattern. 
for question number three now it says find a rectangle with the same perimeter as rectangle C. Well, they all have the same perimeter, so it's 20, but has an even greater area than any of these that I have. So here is the pattern that I'd like you to notice. When I have a really tall, skinny, or if this was laying down on its side, um, rectangle when the two dimensions are really far apart as far apart as i can get and still have whole number measurements um i have the smallest area so when it got a little bit wider now i've got a, a width of two it got a little bit bigger for my area when i get it even wider so four and six where these numbers are starting to get closer to each other I get a bigger area. So if I want to have another rectangle that has a perimeter of 20, but also has a bigger area than this, the one that I can think of is if I can hopefully draw one that's relatively square-ish, if I would have a rectangle that has dimensions of five. So really this is actually a square. The area for this would be 25 square units. And for my perimeter, it's going to be 20. So it has the right perimeter, but a bigger area. Now, when I look at this, I have, <clears throat> Uh, a problem that I want to try to be able to figure out. I want this rectangle to have a perimeter of 32 units, whatever those units happen to be. And I want to come up with different rectangles that would have that same perimeter. Then we'll also take a look at the areas that I would have there. So if I would be thinking about this 32 instead of trying to think all the way up to 32 i like to use that perimeter trick of mine and cut it in half and say 16. so i really only need the length plus the width to be 16. so if i would have let's say six for the length and 10 for the width that would give me a perimeter of 32 because 6 plus 10 is 16 times 2 is going to be 32 that's what i wanted and the area, the 6 times 10, is going to be 60. And again, that's in square units. So let's come up with another rectangle that would fit that same 32 units for the perimeter. So remember, that means I need my length and width to add up to be 16. So what if I would do 3 and 13? That's a weird looking 13, but there we go. It's a little better. Um, the perimeter is going to be 32. That was our whole thing. We had to make sure that it was going to be 32. The area is 39. Uh, let's see. Can I come up with another one? Two numbers that add up to be 16. Let's use 7 and 9 because 7 plus 9 is 16 times 2 is 32. If I would add or if I would multiply the 7 times 9, that's going to be 63 for my area. So just using these three, I can come up with all the same perimeters and different areas. Uh, for part B now, it says find a pair of side lengths for rectangle D that gives the greatest area in square units. So what we just said earlier was that as the length and the width get closer to each other, the more squarish that we can make this, the better. <clears throat> so if I need my perimeter to be 32, half of that is 16, remember. If I want to add two numbers to be 16, I could use 8 and 8. That would give me the right perimeter, and the area then would be 64, which is actually bigger than that one. Um, that I just had with the 7 and 9, even though the 7 and 9 were fairly close. 8 and 8 are exactly the same. That's going to be the biggest area. <clears throat> Letter C says find a pair of side lengths that gives the smallest area. So this time I want my length and width to be as far apart as possible. Again, only using whole number kind of 
um, <clears throat> measurements. So if I want them to be as far apart as possible and I still need that perimeter to be 32, so half of that would be 16, I'm going to go with 1 and 15. That does give me the correct perimeter. And the area then, 1 times 15, is only 15. So significantly smaller than any of the other areas that I had. Okay, now new rectangle. We're up to rectangle E now. This one has an area. This time it's saying area is 36 square units. So I want to find three pairs of sides that give this area. <clears throat> so two numbers that multiply to be, oops, 36. If they multiply to be 36, um, let's start with maybe 2 and 18. Those two multiply to be 36. And the perimeter, so 2 plus 18 would be 20, times 2 would be 40 units. Um, another pair that could multiply to be 36. What if I would use 3 and 12? 3 times 12 is 36. 3 plus 12 is 15. 15 times 2 would be 30 for my perimeter. And if I want to find another one, it gives me an area of 36. Let's go with 4 times 9. You can see my pattern in the lengths 2, 3, 4, just trying to go through numbers as easily as possible. 4 plus 9 is 13, times 2 would be 26. Okay, so all of my areas are the same. This time you can see the perimeters as um, the numbers are getting closer to each other. You can see what's happening with the perimeters this time. Um, <clears throat> so B this time says find a pair of side lengths that gives the greatest perimeter. So again, remember, we have to keep 36 for my area. If I want the greatest perimeter, you can see the, the biggest one that I have right now is right here with 40, and that's where the 2 and the 18 were very far apart. The only thing that I could come up with that, that would be farther apart than that, that would still multiply to be 36, would be 1 times 36. That would give me 1 plus 36 is going to be 37. 37 times 2 would be 74 for my perimeter. And the last question here it says find a pair of side lengths that gives the smallest perimeter. So again, we are looking to keep the area at 36. So I need numbers that multiply to be 36, but I want the smallest perimeter. So we said that when the numbers were farthest apart, I got the biggest perimeter. When these numbers, I my numbers just kind of kept getting closer and closer together. That's how I was getting smaller perimeters. If I want the smallest perimeter possible, then I need numbers that are as close to each other as possible. Numbers that multiply to be 36, I could go with 6 and 6. 6 times 6 is 36. 6 plus 6 is 12 times 2 would be 24. So again, look at the difference between that perimeter and that perimeter just based on what that rectangle would look like. A really long skinny uh, rectangle or one that's actually a square. So now this says we've got two different tables. One table's on this slide, one's on the next slide. So don't get confused about that. So I've got these two different tables. One of them shows rectangle A, and it says that every single time I am going to force that the length to always stay at five centimeters. So I want to be able to fill in this table. A little bit of problem solving. So if the length is 5, and, and again, notice all of the lengths are 5, the widths we're going to be changing. If I have a length of 5 and a width of 1, well, 5 plus 1 is 6, times 2 would be 12. And this is all in centimeters now, and it's labeled for you. The area of that would be length times width, which is going to be 5. 
In the next rectangle, 5 plus 2 is 7 times 2 would be 14. And 5 times 2 would be 10. If I have 5 and 4 as my dimensions, 5 plus 4 is 9 times 2 is 18. 5 times 4 is 20. Now I'm jumping around and giving different information. So if the perimeter is 20, remember then that means half of the perimeter has to be 10. 5 plus what number would give me 10? Well, that's going to be 5. And then 5 times 5 is going to be 25. If I know that the length is 5 in the next one and the area is 40, well, 5 times 8 would be 40. 5 plus 8 is 13 times 2 would be 26. In the next one, if the perimeter is 28, so half of the perimeter would be 14, 5 plus 9 would be 14, 5 times 9 is 45. And 5 times some number for my width has to be 50, well that number has to be 10. And 5 plus 10 is 15, times 2 would be 30. Now, if I want to be able to look at this and use some kind of a generalization, if I know that the length has to stay at 5 and the width can be some number, the perimeter, I would do 5 plus x. Well, I don't know what x is, so it's just be 5 plus x. But that all has to be times 2. So either I can write that, I'm going to write that over here, 5 plus x, then I'm going to multiply that by 2. Now, personally, I don't really like to have the x second, but that's okay. I could simplify this, though. I could clean that up for sure for the perimeter. Wouldn't this just be 10 plus 2x? And again, I, I really personally like to have the x first, so 2x plus 10. The area isn't quite as difficult. 5 times x is just going to be 5x. Okay, so that was rectangle A where our length was constant. It was always exactly 5 centimeters. Now I've got rectangle B, and it says that it is a square. So the length and the width are always, always, always going to match. So filling in this table, if the length is 1 and the width is 1, well, 1 plus 1 is 2 times 2 is going to be 4 centimeters. And then the area, 1 times 1, is just going to be 1. Well, 2 plus 2 is 4, times 2 is going to be 8 for the perimeter, 2 times 2 is going to be 4. 3 plus 3 is 6, times 2 would be 12, 3 times 3 is going to be 9. 4, well, if it's a square, this has to be a 4. 4 plus 4 is 8, times 2 is 16. 4 times 4 is 16, so it's interesting that the perimeter and the area happen to match. You can see that's not always going to happen, so please don't assume that. And again, if I know that the width is 8, and I know that it's a square, that also has to be an 8. 8 plus 8 is 16. 16 times 2 is 32. And 8 times 8 is going to be 64. In the next one, they just give me the area, and it's 100, but we know that that would have to be 10 times 10 to get 100. And 10 plus 10 is 20, times 2 is 40. In the last one in the table, if the width is x, well, then the length also has to be x. The perimeter, so I would have x plus x is 2x, times 2 would be 4x. And the area x times x would be x squared. Now the last thing that I'm going to be doing here is I want to look at how some of those graphs look when we're comparing some of these things. So the first one that I'm asking about is in rectangle A. That's the one where we had 5 for all of the lengths. The perimeter is going to be my my y value and the x value is going to be the width so if we look back at that one so we're looking at the x and the perimeter in my table here's the x here's the perimeter right so i want to be able to compare those two things and i have that 
handy dandy graph right here. So if I am comparing, whoops, sorry about that. If I grab that, so the X's were down here, the area was here, this was my equation, Y equals 10 plus 2X or 2X plus 10. That should look like a linear equation, right? Y equals 2X plus 10. Well, that means that my Y intercept is at 10 and it's increasing at a slope or a rate of change of two. So up two and over one, I have to be careful because it isn't counting by ones over here on this side, but that's what that graph looks like. Clearly a linear graph, right? We know that for sure. For B, it says the X and the area of rectangle A. So the area of rectangle A, remember because the length was always five, it was just gonna be five X. So I don't have the X and the Y axes labeled on here, but you know that this is also a linear graph. This is Y equals five X plus zero. So it began at zero and the slope is up five and over one. C is asking about the perimeter uh, X and the perimeter of rectangle B. So if we look at this, the X is the width and the perimeter 4x, it's not going to be a real big surprise here that this graph will also be, be linear. It's going to be a straight line. It's y equals 4x plus 0. And the last one, d says x in the area of rectangle b. Now if we remember what that said, the area of rectangle b has an x squared. And when we worked with our linear graphs, we know that an X squared cannot happen when we are graphing a straight line. So if you look at this, you can see it's clearly not a straight line. This is going to be a curve. This is what we're going to be focusing on in this chapter. So now that we've kind of gone through and, and looked for all of those relationships, uh, please talk to your teacher or check Schoology and see what your assignment is for today. And if you need any help, reach out to your teacher.